Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Say Shu, and I'm speaking with Tamara Lackey, who's based in North Carolina. You guys know she's a professional photographer who does families and children, and she's also the founder of Beautiful Together. Thanks for joining us today, Tamara. Thank you for having me. It's so exciting to be actually sitting down and talking to you again. I think the last time we ran into each other, I bought you some coffee, and you owe me some coffee now again. <laughs> some such, I think, some no, such no, story. I, I, I borrowed twenty dollars from you. You borrowed twenty dollars from me. You owe me twenty bucks. Uh, but this isn't about twenty bucks. This is about this is about uh, this is about you coming on my show to talk a little bit about posing and involving everybody in a family portrait situation. And so my first question off the bat is, how did you get started in in family photography, family portraits? What is it that really inspired you to do that versus something else? Yeah, well, uh, interestingly enough, I didn't start because I was inspired to photograph families. I was inspired to photograph children, ah. and they always came with families, so I'd photograph them too. That was initially how I got into it, um, but over time, over the course of several years of um, photographing families and learning a lot of techniques that would work better and better, um, I started finding myself a little more interested in the challenge of photographing families versus feeling kind of like, oh, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, and then with developments in my own family's growth, we you know we went from having our little girl, who our biological daughter, to adopting a little boy and then a little girl, and along the way spent time in orphanages and literally lived in an orphanage and, and um, got to know children and got um, a whole different idea of what family really means. Like, it's one thing to say, hey, everybody has a family. It's another thing to realize, no, 150 million children around the world do not have a family. Right. Um, it's very difficult for them to be with a family. And the older they get, the less likely it will be that they'll have a family. Um, and it just really changed my entire perception of, of the power of family, of the, the mm -hmm. gift of belonging, of togetherness. And it's, it has shifted the way I saw it when I went out on shoot. So instead of feeling like it was one other genre, I started thinking of it as this miraculous, you know, tribe of people who are together and have each other's back and will always be in each other's lives. And, right. um, and yes, everything that is part of that, but it really shifted my appreciation for the genre and uh, my excitement around photographing families. In your, uh, in your experience, uh, what would you say family portraits do for, for the family? Like, why is it so important for families to have family portraits? Yeah, I mean, I can only I can look to my own family to see what a big deal that is. <laughs> you know, I look yeah. through the progression of photos and just say, how is it happening so quickly? Um, I think any parent has that same sensation of, of it's the most trite thing in the world. You hear that it all happens so fast. Right. And yet it does feel that way, even though every morning getting them to school doesn't feel like it's um, going quickly. <laughs> it's going so slow. Get out the door. Um, but, uh, you know, for that reason alone, I personally can very, very much relate to how powerful it is to have one great image of all of us together, all of us um, showcasing how much we, we do connect to each other, we belong to each other, how we are um, this entity that is a rare and beautiful thing if you really look at it. Um, and uh, in addition, being able to showcase each of us attractively and um, showcase some of our personality, getting an image like that has always been a challenge uh, for me as a photographer to be able to shoot. And it's something that I've developed a lot of little um, tricks around to be able to, to make it happen. Um, so I personally know just how powerful it is to say, hey, you ask most people what the most important thing in their life is. And if they're not listing family in the top five, I'd be surprised. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to have some representation, a very good, solid representation of that becomes something that's priceless. Indeed. Uh, going off in a bit of a tangent, you know, one of the things that I've struggled with uh, sometimes is when I photograph families, it's usually the fathers in the, in the photograph that are somewhat standoffish. They're aloof. They're shy, perhaps. Uh, how would you recommend, give us two or three tips in trying to get them more involved in the photo shoot so that they are really enjoying themselves as well because yeah. I, don't, I don't want it to be i don't want the photo shoots to be very one-sided you know just, yeah just the mom and the kids having a great time and the dad's just going well what am i doing here you know right i want the, i want the dads to be <laughs> loving it too what would you yeah. recommend uh well first of all you may be experiencing that a lot because of your striking good looks and your intimidating personality that is and true. your velvety voice there you go did you say that people could see you on this interview or no? No. Ah! <laughs> but they know what, they what I look they like. They, they know exactly what yeah. I'm talking 
out. Absolutely. Um, that might be part of the problem. You might be just intimidating the crap out of them. <laughs> I'm uh, sure. But assuming that's not the case, which most likely it is, assuming that's not the case, um, I think a lot of times the probably the most resistant subjects you're going to come across, um, and I, again, I've, I've photographed literally a few thousand professional portrait sessions of the last 13 and a half years. And, Absolutely, yeah. um, and, and what I've seen in terms of uh, that experience is the most resistant subjects you come across are um, sometimes the fathers, um, often uh, teens and early teens right. who, you know, just don't want to be there. And, it's, you know, and, and if they do um, do the session with you, they usually have a preconceived notion of how they're supposed to be. Um, or the or the, the selfie kind of look, which is a new, relatively new phenomenon to battle. Um, and lastly, uh, is of course toddlers are always racing out of the photo, and you can't get them in. So, but the one that you're probably, um, obviously, <laughs> based on your question, most interested in is dads. And so, part of what I think it is is the vast majority of the time, family photo sessions are being booked by the mom in the family. That is just nearly always what it is, not every time, but most of the time. And because of that, there's not that initial investment, that, that initial involvement. They kind of just show up where they're told to show up. And if I'm aware of that, if I'm coming into a shoot understanding that that's most likely what is going down, and if I'm getting a vibe of that, which I, which I would based on some of the vibe you've had, like they don't seem like they want to be here. <laughs> they they kind of want to just get through it. They're looking at their watch. They're checking their phone, et cetera. Um, then the best thing I can do is just face that front on and simply say, so did you, um, did you, were you part of the planning process or did you just find that it showed up in your schedule somewhere? You know, like literally just say that in a really comfortable, easygoing, non-judgmental, conversational way. Sure. And most of the time, the first thing they do is crack up and make some sort of comment like, yeah, I just four o'clock be at this garden. Here I am. And and then and so you're already engaging them. Right. I think the um, keeping that going the entire shoot and engagement and involvement. You know, asking about what they do, um, where they spend their time, this and that. Uh, you, all you're doing is ensuring that they're now part of the experience and they're there with you. Right. The worst case scenario is to feel like they don't want to be here. They think I suck. <laughs> they hate that they ever do that. I feel awkward and strange, so I'm not going to say anything or do anything, and I'm just going to move them around. Mm. All that's doing is creating more and more of a gap between you guys, and it's going to be very, very difficult to get authentic interactive expressions when you are separating yourself more and more from a subject by simply ignoring the, the awkwardness that is there. Uh, is it possible, though, then, based on what you've just said to me, uh, to involve the dad in the planning process like we would hope to. Like, I mean, really, instead of saying, hey, only the moms can call in, can we have the dads and the moms come in and talk to us? Or we can go to their houses and be able to talk to them about what their experience should be like. You mean like a pre-consultation? Exactly. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think that'd be too much. Really? For me, personally. For me, personally. Um, I feel like a lot of it can be done uh, right before we start shooting. Having that time, we're already all there together. It feels more natural. Um, the last thing I would want to do is tell somebody they have to do a series of meetings with me before the shoot that they're resistant to doing in the first place. Personally, that's how I feel. I know other people who say pre-consultations make it for them. That's the reason they do it. It works really well. I don't do pre-consultations in person. I do them by phone, and I kind of go over things, and I'm more interested in, in getting that, um, that emotional connection and, and understanding kind of you know, aspects of, of the personalities of everybody I'm photographing. Um, and so by that very nature, I think by having a meeting where we sit down and we kind of brainstorm it well before the shoot, I would feel like that's a bit overkill. Right. Okay. Um, and, and, and I'm coming at it from the perspective of I am very aware that my clients mm -hmm. um, are, uh, and, and you have to know your target market. So I know my target market, one of the, the number one things nearly all my clients share is they are busy. They feel right. overwhelmed. They feel like they're keeping, whether they're both working full time or one is and the other one's just feels like they're in the midst of chaos and, and wondering how is it I don't have a professional job because I'm always going, you know. Um, right. Whatever the, the case might be, I think because I know that about my clients, um, to ask for one more thing, I feel like would actually detract from, from that. And, and so I'm just being very focused and aware of that on the, on the shoot and making sure that in the very first, you know, 10, 15 minutes, we're chatting and talking and building up that repertoire. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for, for that piece of advice. Really, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I've learned from you, and you're not just limited to being a photographer. You're a, a, just an avid blogger as well. And you've written a number of books, including the most recent one, which is called The Family Posing Playbook. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a sequel to 
the first the one. Sequel. I have a sequel. I yeah, have a, you, you have, that way. That's you, hilarious. Yeah, that's how I'm seeing it. Uh, <gasps> the first one in the series was called The Play- Posing Playbook for Kids Who Don't Do Posing. And yeah. in your introduction, you, you hit it straight on that it, it's not just kids who don't do posing. Families also struggle with this idea of posing for the mm-hmm. camera. Um, you know, you and I know Jester Rocks very well. We, we've, mm-hmm. we've been at a, a workshop together where he's taught us uh, ways of really involving and having our, our subjects really interact with each other in a beautiful way. Uh, is it possible then to bring that sort of posing to to the the photo shoot or would you recommend something somewhat straightforward like you're suggesting in your book yeah well the um the answer is twofold first and foremost it depends on the dynamic of who i am across from when i'm photographing if it's just a couple I find that that um, that emphasis on connection and, and getting them closer to each other and that sort of thing is very very helpful. It goes a long way towards transforming just poses into emotion, right. um, which I love. If I'm photographing a family where I know that there's um, a complicated, more complicated dynamic, and I don't mean emotionally or anything else, I mean, hey, this toddler's running that way. This kid doesn't want to be there. This one wants to grab his iPad from the car, <laughs> you know. Right. And that, if you've been doing a lot of shoots, you know that feeling, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even feel like Dad wants to be here, um, and Mom seems super stressed out because no one's doing this one thing that she asked for. Like, if I'm facing that dynamic, um, I'm going to want to make sure in those first 10, 15 minutes, I'm doing something not dissimilar to what I would do with a couple, Mm -hmm. um, but just more geared towards their actual experience. If I were to sit there right now and say to everybody, let's just, you know, calm down. And it's not, it's not going to work in that environment. But if I do something where all I'm focused on is interaction and engagement, and I'm getting them to open up, I'm getting them to forget everything else they're doing. I'm getting them to be here. Most of the job of a portrait photographer is to get your clients to be present. Like, how do I get you to not want that iPad, to not do this, to not wish, be checking your watch? Um, and, and there's a process, and I, and I go through this in the Family Posing Playbook, where I'm doing what I would almost call a scan. I'm scanning every single subject consistently as mm-hmm. we're going to see where are you? Are you with me? Have I lost you? What are you engaged in? What are you interested in? What are you responding to? Right. Um, and there's a rhythm, and, it's, and there's an actual system that can work, which is what I go through there. Um, but most of it is, hey, get your lighting, get your exposure, make sure you, you're thinking about things like foreground, gr- background, composition, framing. Um, but at the end of the day, what makes it a great portrait is going to be that expressiveness. Oh, and and those techniques are so powerful for that. Right. Love it. Okay. Uh, we have to talk about uh, Beautiful Together. Uh, tell us a l- little bit about how you got started with Beautiful Together. What is Beautiful Together in the first place? Uh, Beautiful Together is our nonprofit that is in support of children waiting for families. And specifically, what we do is we work to um, be able to specifically focus on children in extreme poverty, in foster care, in orphanages, both in, the, in Ethiopia and in the United States. And um, what we try to do is be able to support them by on the ground projects, like specifically being there and doing a, a physical project, which you know I can share a few of those that we've done already. Um, and uh, obviously, photography and video projects profiles and social outreach. Awesome. So that's what Beautiful Together is. And, and, and a great example of that is um, we visited an orphanage last summer in Ethiopia and were kind of just taken aback by the state of the bathrooms. There's 65 children living there and the bathrooms were just in extraordinarily rough shape. Um, and I mean, um, old, rusted, uh, not non-existent <laughs> in some cases. And you have 65 children trying to use these. You know, the the sink was a um, a large barrel that would sit there with water all day, and they plunge their hands in. Um, and you know, that's just Ooh. kind of the pace in the, the when you have five or six caregivers for 65 children, you mm-hmm. can only do so much. Right. And so we, um, you know, came up with a project plan to renovate all the bathrooms, put in sinks, put you know, be able to take advantage of running water, um, have a plan in place when water's not running because you can have a sink and the water's running but maybe three hours that day the water's not going to be running um so put in hand sanitizers and um and do a combination of things like i wanted to put in all western toilets and make it like a really nice sort of situation but i found out while i was there that hey little children who are unsupervised will fall into the toilets 
and it doesn't work. Like right. nobody's there making sure the little potty thing's on there. Right. So we had squatty potties, you know, our squat potties where you can actually, that, which is very, very common in Ethiopia and the kids are more used to and can handle on their own. So it was quite a learning curve, but that took about two months from start to finish and we got those bathrooms completely renovated and it was all crowdsourced, just putting the word out. Um, people came and very generously donated um, and since then we've done, um, we've done four projects in total now. Um, another one was basically creating a really safe outside area for children to play in an inner city orphanage. Um, another was putting up a portrait gallery photographing all 65 oh, children. Wow. Uh, that was so cool. You can see all this at beautifultogether.org. Oh, fantastic. Um, putting up a portrait gallery of all the 65 children all throughout the orphanage. Um, and uh, our newest one that we're working on right now is lighting the classrooms. They have these on-site classrooms um, that have either do not have power or they have one bulb that you can barely see the chalkboard. And so putting in solar panels to be able to give these kids an actual education. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask you this. Why? What? What is it that motivates you to do all of this with beautiful together yeah oh uh it feels so good no yeah that's that's sure that's for sure it's but a slightly selfish answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and you know i think it's one thing to say well oh, i feel bad for those kids over there it's another thing to be spending lots of time with them and we have over the last 10 years we've spent a good amount of time yeah. in third world countries and and specifically drawn to that obviously two of our three children are adopted from ethiopia and ecuador we're in the process of adopting our uh, fourth child oh, who's wow. living in ethiopia yeah yeah a little boy who's five and a half we've been in the process since last summer um it's taking a while the international adoption process has gotten more difficult over time which is so frustrating um because the child count has not gone down it's just you know there's still more children waiting um and i think it's, when you, it's like anything when you spend time when you recognize the the needs and and how you can look right there and say okay if we just took those out those those rusted um, when i said we built in this outside area for kids to play what they'd had was these really short fences that were rusted and pulled back with sharp pokey things sticking out and i'm like if we could just place all that and put up clean safe fencing and double the height they wouldn't run out into the street they wouldn't have you know street dogs come out like vicious street dogs come hurt them you know mm -hmm. just crazy things like that that you can actually see from a to z this is what we'd have to do and this is the money we'd have to raise and this is who we can hire and then we'd be done like so it becomes mm -hmm. such an appealing thing right. Right. to actually see how you can't save the world but maybe you can do this one thing this one time Tom Rolacki, thank you so much. Uh, you're, you're such an inspiration uh, for just not just me, but for tons and tons of women out there and, and guys out there, too, who are looking at, 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 at photography not just as a way of making a buck, but really using their skills and in, in advancing uh, humanity. And I think I have yeah. to thank you for, for what you do. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about the family uh, posing playbook or beautiful together um well beautiful together i would just love people to check it out so beautiful and um and just see what we're getting involved in and see on the front page the ways that you can get involved outside of just donating um i definitely want to thank you for that sincere compliment i really really appreciate it especially coming from you so thank you and um for family posing playbook i think we have uh, the first 200 copies issued because we just issued it we just went out like a couple days ago and um the first 200 uh, copy sold get a free sixty dollar song from Triple Scoop Music. Oh wow! A uh, lifetime licensed song, and um, I think we're down to about forty or so left. So okay. they're going fast, which is oh. great. Okay. Um, but uh, depending on when this goes live right. and how many is left, um, that that piece of information. Okay. And and there's a certain portion of the sale of the book that goes 10%, to ten percent. Ten percent goes directly to Beautiful Together. So we're going to be able to basically um, do a huge chunk towards the current project we're raising funds for, which is fantastic. Excellent. Wow. This is good news all around. Thanks again, Tamara. I look forward to seeing you at PPE and uh, uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. You Take too. Care. Bye. Bye.